Um, Michael Brito, our guest today, is the Executive Vice President at Zeno Group. And before we jump into the conversation, will you just give us a quick intro about who you are and why you're the guy that we're lucky to be talking to today? I, uh, I, so I work at Zeno Group. We're an integrated communications agency. And um, I've been doing a lot of employee work for years, even before there was technology to support it. So I'm always a firm believer that when you can mobilize people who have a strong affinity towards your brand, i.e. your employees, um, and equip them with technology and training and assuming you have a really strong culture, then you can employ them to um, have those, tech, those conversations externally with um, their peers, their other stakeholders, the media, influencers. And um, so I've been doing this a long time. I've worked on the client side for many years um, here in Silicon Valley, born and raised. And um, as Robin said, I, or you didn't say this yet, but um, I just finished my third book about the topic that we're going to talk about today. So I'm excited to share some of those insights with you. All right. So we're going to jump to this conversation. So what are some of the like tangible results and impacts of strong employee communication? The way that you, you position the program is not necessarily with the idea that, you know, 5,000 employees are going to go tweet about the company. It's more about how to build an infrastructure of transparency and trust. And of that sprouts employee advocacy. So, so leading into the engagement conversation and the fact that the, the workforce is so different today than it was 10 years ago with millennials now becoming directors and, and starting companies and leading teams, it's a whole different game. And so being able to shift and be flexible from a leadership standpoint, I think that, that is the core, core uh, that's the critical success factor. In your mind, what's the connection between company culture and communication? If a company is struggling with the culture, then please, 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 please don't think about creating an employee advocacy program. Fix the right. culture first, right? Hire right. a chief culture officer or somebody who can rally the troops and, and, and begin to change. And sometimes that change has to start at the top and, and maybe the, the yeah. you know, the, the the, the head of HR or maybe the CEO is just not the right person to lead the company to the next phase of the company. Everyone talks about how employees are important for the organization. Um, I think if you ask any executive, they would totally agree that their employees are the most important part of their business. But often we see them being undervalued by companies or, or not prioritized. Why do you think that happens? Well, I think it's, um, I don't know if they're undervalued. I think that they're just not being told that they are valued. So uh, sometimes it's just that positive reinforcement, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I, you know, being a manager of people for many years, you know, I learned early on that, you know, my team likes it when I give them public praise or, and some yeah. prefer public, some prefer private. Um, and so just the, the, the one-off email saying, Hey, you know, I really appreciate what you've done. And I really appreciate you going hundred miles per hour or, or going above and beyond. So I, I don't know if it's the fact that companies don't value their employees. I think in their heart, yeah. they it's just a matter of telling them um, and, and reinforcing that they do value their employees. What does employee advocacy really mean? Finding employees that have a natural affinity towards the brand. Now, there's so many variables right. outside of that, but, but yeah. a very direct kind of um, definition is that the employees that have a natural affinity towards your brand are going to be talking right. about your company anyway. So why not right. mobilize a program to, to drive integration? There's a model that I always reference called the 1990 model. It's a model that I use for influencer marketing. It's also a model used to identify internally who the storytellers and who the sharers and engagement, those who are just yeah. going to engage. So the 1990 model basically says within your company, 1% are going to be storytellers. 9% are going to, to package those stories and share it. And then the 90% aren't really going to, they may just watch and follow, or maybe they're just not digitally um, proficient or don't want to be. And yeah. that's okay. You don't have to get everyone in the organization to participate. If you can get that 1% and the 9% to participate, then you're going to win because the 1% are going to be the ones that are going to do webinars. They're going to write blog posts. They're going to write on, right. they're going to write glass door reviews. The 9% yeah. are going to poll. Hey, LinkedIn polls. Exactly. The 9% are going to see that and they're going to share it. So from my standpoint, that is a, that is a huge opportunity because it's not just an employee sharing a LinkedIn update from the company. It's an employee right. sharing a LinkedIn blog post from another employee. What are some of the coolest or sort of most impactful examples of brand ambassadors or employee advocates that you've seen? 
externally, I've seen companies like early on when Best Buy launched their, um, and I can't remember the name of the, um, the program. It was essentially retailer, you know, their retail employees and staff were engaged with customers and they were acting almost as like, like, like IT support. Oh, you need help integrating this with this. And, and you know, they were tweeting Q and A type of thing. So that to me yeah. really does influence, influence buyer behavior. So that was a very public, yeah. you know, case study. There's been instances with, um, like, um, why can I think of it? Not the Amazon acquired them. It's the shoe company in Vegas. You probably bought shoes uh, from there. Oh, right? Zappos? Zappos, hello. Yeah, yeah, where, you know, you have a problem with shipping or, you know, there's a, a defective product and you tweet about it. Like you have a hundred people responding saying, how can I help you? Or what can we do? And they're not even customer service people. They're salespeople, they're marketers, they're engineers. So that to me are two great retail examples of, of, of really driving impact that really does have um, effect in the bottom line. What are some of the things that companies should consider up front before formalizing and launching a new communication, engagement, and advocacy program? Well, you have to have a narrative. Just like in any marketing and, and PR program, you know, build a narrative. What is that core differentiator of and message that you're trying to get to your employees? What is that universal mm -hmm. truth? What are some of the KPIs that, that we set that are sort of typical so that you know that you're tracking towards success and you're going to have the outcomes that you, that you desire? Leads. I mean, that's, that's, that's probably the top of mind for the CMOs, top of mind for whoever's investing in your program. Like, how am I going to get leads? And you can get leads. I, I've seen it. I've seen it in very technical B2B environments. In, in consumer marketing, um, it's sales. I mean, you can actually drive sales if you're smart about you know, link tracking and, and, and the, sure. the integration with, you know, Google Analytics or Site uh, Catalyst, Adobe. Right. So there's a lot of kind of ways to do that. Outside of that, you know, certainly the, the common KPIs are engagement, you know, community growth. Um, but then you can also shift attitude and perception. So if you're really sophisticated, yeah. you have some really good, either primary, you can do some primary research or social listening or a combination of both, you can see if yeah. you're actually changing brand perception of the company. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, Robin. Um, and we just really appreciate you being here and sharing your insight. And um, I cannot wait to read the book. And um, I know we're going to get a lot of great nuggets out of that, too. So thank you for joining the DiSci community today. I really um, I think it was a, a great conversation. I can tell by the number of questions we still have left that people really enjoyed hearing from you.